we only have the ability to integrate a whole bunch of different things. But if you change the little tiny pieces about what we know how to integrate, all of a sudden it becomes not so much fun. You know, we know how to integrate something like uh, that pretty easily. And then it gets more fun when we do things like this, right? But then what happens when we end up with something like structurally, have I made many changes? No. Not really. In terms of the work you have to do, have I changed it a great deal? Yeah, it goes from kind of being rather straightforward to being kind of entertaining to kind of being, oh, we have to learn a new system. So you might have seen this before. I think you covered some of this last year a little bit. PFD, not personal flotation device. What does it stand for? Partial fraction. <laughs> Close. <laughs> partial fra it's the, the proper term is partial fraction decomposition. We're wow. decomposing these. Wow. The challenge here is that do, you can't really do this in your head. There isn't a way to kind of undo it with any of the rules that we know. We need to decompose this into smaller pieces. We need to decompose that into smaller pieces. The pieces we're going to decompose it into are we're going to change it into something that looks like this. Now, if A and B are constants, for example, is that something we could integrate? Yeah. Absolutely. The entire challenge of these is not the integration. The challenge is rewriting something that we can't integrate in terms of something that we can. That's really the, that's kind of like the theme of most of math. Like in my algebra two class, we just started working with three by three systems, like solving three equations, three variables. Now, the trick to solving those is just make turning it into a two by two system. Are my kids really, really, really comfortable with two by two systems? Yes. So three by three systems transfer into two by two, we're home free. It's kind of like when you do with cubics, like solving cubics. As long as you can get back to a quadratic, are you happy? Quadratic is happy. Cubic, not so much. But if you can factor out or reduce into a quadratic, you can find that third solution if it exists. So this problem right here that we're going to do, let me move this down here. This one right here, let's move it to the right. We need to answer this question. 1 over, and I'll move this down, sorry, 1 over x minus 2 times x minus 5 is equal to a over x minus 2 plus b over x minus 5. We need to answer that question. If we can answer that question, we are home free. We get to something that we know how to integrate directly just by looking at it and knowing what the integral is. Algebraically, what should we do if we wanted to solve for a and b? Anybody have an idea of what we should do? James, four. You multiply by uh, x minus two times x. Yeah, if you multiply by the least common denominator, which is what you just said we should do, you end up with a one is equal to a times x minus five plus b times what? X minus two. Now we want this. This is the key element. This is the key element here. You look at this and you're like, man, there's an X, there's an A, and there's a B, there's three variables. Oh my gosh. Are A and B really variables? No. no. X is the only variable. We want this statement to be true for which X values? Any X values. All of them. Exactly. We want this to be true for all X values. We're trying to find A and B values that work for all X values. So if they work for all X values, it has to work for any X value we choose. Are there any particular x values we can choose that are helpful in terms of reducing the system? Zero. Oh, oh no, well, zero is a good. We're, we're aiming for zero, but we want something to cancel. Two. X is equal to let's say five. If we do that, we get one is equal to b times three. So what does b equal? A third. Now, oh look, x could be one. x could be two. So we end up with one is equal to a times negative three. So a is equal to is it totally coincidence that these are opposites of one another? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. I'm just going to tell you right now. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> it is a coincidence. Don't expect them to always be opposites like that. You're, it, it, it's nice-ish, but it's not a given. Okay. So now, what can we do? We now know that the integral of 1 over x minus 2 times x minus 5 dx, what is that equal to? The integral of w not 1. What's over, what is A? A was the one that's over x minus 2. So negative 1 third over x minus 2 plus 1 third over 
5 dx. Now, is that something? Absolutely. That is definitely something you could integrate. What would be something nice you could do to make that integral a little bit cleaner? What? Yeah, you could distribute, pull it out. You got, all said the same thing in different ways. You just kind of want to get rid of that one third. You can pull that out to the front. Uh, pull out a, do you want to pull out a one third or a negative one third? What do you want to pull out? You want to pull out a negative one third? Well, if you pull out a negative one third, you're still going to create a negative. <laughs> it doesn't really matter, but you're going to end up with negative one third, the integral of what? 1 over x minus 2 minus 1 over x minus 5 dx, like this. Now, what is that integral? What does that come out to be? ln of what? x minus 2 minus ln of x minus 5. And yes, James, you could put it together and make it ln of x minus 2 divided by x minus 5. Absolutely. But hey, do we have any integrals left? Yeah, but no. Oh, should you put the absolute value in? What do you think? Yes. Should we put plus c in? Should we put yeah, absolute value in? Should we put x value in? Okay, first of all, yes. Yes, right. We can put plus c in. Absolutely. Definitely, definitely. Do we need the absolute value? Yes. Constant. They're both constants. Are a and b always going to be constants? No. They're not always going to be constants. The general rule we're working with is the numerator is going to be one degree less than the denominator. What were the degrees of the denominators right there? One. So what's the degree of the numerator? None. Zero. So x to zero is one. That's why it's a constant. Are you always going to have mono-degree terms in the denominator? No, you're not. So the book does a pretty good job of ramping you through how this can change a little bit. So for example, this one right here. Let's take a look at this one. Not really, no. You just have to be careful about what you're setting up. That's it. So we're not going to finish this. Let's just set it up correctly. What's the first thing you need to do on this one? One word. What do you need to do first? Decompose. We're going to decompose, but before we decompose, what do we need to do? Take out the one. You can factor it out. Factor. This right here is my favorite thing in all of math. I love factor. Did my thesis on factor. Loved it. Loved it. So what do we need to factor? I actually did my thesis on think that something very related to factor. Yes. Uh, so we have x plus 2 over x times x plus 1 dx. And we want this to decompose into x over a. Well, a over what? I over x. x plus b over what? x plus 1. We'd love this to be true. Correct? Oh, huh. OK. That's nice. So let's set that up and see what happens. The only change here, instead of that one floating out there, what's gonna, what are you going to have? You're going to have an x plus two. 2. So if we set these equal and multiply by the common denominator, is it okay if I do that without writing it down? If I set them equal, which I can, x plus 2, fine, I'll write them down. i gotta, I got to follow the rubric, right? i got to make sure I explain all my steps out loud. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Now we're just doing algebra. We've dropped it because we're just trying to make equivalent expressions right here. If we multiply by the common denominator, we end up with x plus 2 equals a times plus b times times x. Exactly. Now the same game is afoot. In this one, the same game is afoot. What are the two? What are the? We'll call them magic values. We'd love to plug in x is equal to zero. negative 1 and 0, and then we're really done at that point. Yes. Because that's gonna make the oh, okay. So let's do it out. Let's see what happens. No, hold on, hold on. Let's see what happens. Oh. Zero is not in the what? The domain. the domain. Okay. So let's see what happens with this one. That's a good catch. So what one can we plug in, though? One. Let's see what happens when we plug in negative one. If x is equal to negative one, you end up with one is equal to a times zero minus b. You can't really... Yeah, Why not? No, no, no. Oh, wait! Negative, negative one, one isn't in the domain. Okay, hold on. Oh, man, I don't want to change the settings. Is not. Oh, man, are we. What, what do we do now? What does a mathematician do when they run out of things to play with? This is what mathematicians do sometimes. Why not? What happens if we actually plug these values in? What happens if we actually plug these up? Because here's the thing. When, we're, when we plug these in, when we oh, we can't plug 0 into here for x, right? But can you plug 0 in over there? Yeah. Does it matter? So this is what I'd like you to do. Try it for me. Finish this problem right here. 
plugging in those two values that we said we can't plug in because they're not in the domain, tell me what happens. Plug those in and see if you can finish this and tell me what the fact that we plugged in things that are not in the domain. So let's see if we can mess around with this a little bit and see if we can come up with another way to get those values. We know that, hold on, you can do it. Let's just multiply it out and see what happens. You know that a plus ax plus a, that's true, right? I just distributed. What about this? Have I, all I've done is re, re, reorder. Are, do you follow the math I did right there? Oh, oh, what's the coefficient of x? You know that a plus b now has to be what? What does a plus b, what does it must be? It must be 1. And you know that a must be 2. So if that's true, b must be negative 1. So were we, oh, there's another thing here. You can plug in magic values or you can match up coefficients. I like the fact that you noticed that the domain, we weren't satisfying the domain. Because let's say you hadn't noticed that. Would we have gotten the same answer? Yes. Yeah, we would have. So in that case, you're technically doing maybe something that's not correct, but you ended up with the right answer. And judging by teenage decision making, yay, we got the right answer, so we're okay. But I really like the fact that you were paying attention to the domain. So the second trick is um, correlate. High school correlate. C-O-O. What high school correlate? C -O -R 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 -L -E -T. Correlate the coefficients. Two Fs in coefficients or just one? Hmm. Looks good. Is that true for the last problem too? It could be. You could probably do it either way. Yes. You could probably do it either way. Sometimes you have to use a combination. Maybe there's one you could plug in and one you can't. Mm -hmm. Try both. The idea is these can be harder because you're in a general space, like you have too much information. So you have to figure out what you should use. X can be anything, but be careful. Maybe if you use something that is in the domain, what could happen? It could blow up on you. Weird things happen when you include things that are in the domain sometimes, not all the time. So how about the denominator is factored? Because one way I can make these questions even more fun for you, and by fun for you, I mean fun for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> could I give you the cubic and not fact and like not factored? Yeah. Yeah. You and, do that. and you could factor if you use you know synthetic division, maybe to you know find. Remember rational zeros, the potential rational zeros? Remember that, maybe? Yeah. You can make a list of things that could be the rational zeros, then you have to run it through, and then you go, ah, ah, ah. Oh, yeah, good times, huh? At least this is factored for you. What's nice about this is it's already factored, so we're trying to turn it into an integral where it's something, and we're going to clean this up because what I'm writing is not totally correct right now, but this is going to be the, the continuation of what we've been doing. We'd love to break it into something like this. Correct? Yes. We'd love to break it into something like that, but what was that thing I told you about powers? What's the power of the denominator under B? One. So B is going to be a constant. constant. What about x minus 1 squared? What about x minus 1 squared? A should be going to be with 1 degree x. Yeah, what, what do you have to be careful of here? Mm. A plus B. Could we make it into yeah. three? Yeah. And like repeat something twice? Yeah. 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 No, you have to do it. This is not bad right Theoretically, I said, I'm going to ask you a question here. If we break something down into ten things we can integrate, or five things we can integrate, we're both at the same place, right? Where are we? We're at a space we can integrate. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right, but that's much easier because. When you have x plus something of the denominator, you can just use the other function. Ah, okay. So That's a great to, idea. Why want to divide x minus 1 square with x minus 1 and other x minus No, but if we do that, you But have here's to the problem. You have to keep, keep in mind. Listen, this is important. This is important here. Let me pause this. We end up with 10x minus 2x squared is equal to a times what? x plus 3. Plus b times x minus 1 squared. squared. Okay, now the magic values, oh, and well, let's go back here. The magic values, we'd love to be able to plug in what? One and negative three. We didn't like doing that, why? Why didn't we like doing that? It made us feel uncomfortable, why? They're not in the domain of the original function, but what did we find out from our example up here? It doesn't matter. It seems to be okay. It seems to be okay. What was that other method we had, though, if we didn't want to plug in magic values? We could try to align the coefficients. 
So if we're going to align the coefficients, we actually need to do what to the right-hand side of this equation? Factor. Well, we, no, we need to do the opposite of factor. We need to distribute plus b times x squared, what, minus what? Minus 2x plus 1, like that. So we get 10x minus 2x squared equals ax plus 3a plus... Hold on. A no, there is right there. No, no, no. It's there. That's a, that would be a good thing to watch out for, absolutely. 2bx plus b. So we need to group these together. So 10x minus 2x squared is equal to... How many x squareds do we have? We just have the bx squared? Yeah. Is that correct? bx squared. And then we have what? Minus... Uh, a minus 2 a Thank you. Plus. I like that. Plus a minus 2b times what? X. X plus... Well, it doesn't matter if it's alphabetical or not, I guess. 3a. So if we group things together... Yeah, we group things together. That's nice. So what, can you give me one observation here? B is negative 2. We know, ah, sorry. B better be negative 2. That's one thing. Let's go to the next one. We know that 10 has to be equal to what? A minus 2B. A minus 2B, but we know B is negative 2. So 10 is equal to A plus 4. Is that correct? So A is equal to 6. So at this point, hold on, we're going to pause. Everybody hands up. We have to pause, take a deep breath here, because remember I said you could, we could run into issues, theoretically? Yeah, we would okay, B is negative 2 and A is 6. I agree, our algebra is pretty good. But what's the problem there? B plus B is not zero. A has to equal zero. Does it? No. No. Not at this point. Look, look, it looks really good, doesn't it? It looks really good. This has to be zero, because is there any constant over here? Negative 2 is B. What's negative 2 plus, oh, 18? 18. If it were to work, we would love it to be 3B plus A. Is that what it says? No. no. So if all of our algebra at this point is correct, which it is, and we end up with something that is incorrect, what does that mean about our initial setup? It's incorrect. This right here, no solution for us. There's no way to do it so that A is a constant and B is a constant. So do you understand what I'm saying here? You can end up with, you're really happy, you do get B is negative 2 and A is 6, but does that match the last qualification here? No. No, it doesn't. We could wander around in the dark a little bit because theoretically, what did I say? We could, can we add another term to this if we wanted to? Yes, if we wanted to add another term, we absolutely could. I could have you figure it out. I'm just going to tell you what you need to do here in terms of the setup. The setup you're looking for is you would love to try to do it as like a over x minus 1 plus b over x minus 1 plus c over x plus 3, something like that. The challenge is, I'll tell you what it is, another reason. So let's say you got 5 here and 6 here. You could automatically combine them because they have the same denominator. Doing this is the same thing as what we did before. It seems like it gives you more. It doesn't. You need another tool, and that other tool is one power less when you have a repeated linear.